Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 11. Now we could take Hebrews 11 and do it darkling for the church age, for the Christian, but we're not going to. We're going to stick on our theme 10 chapters, 11 chapters. Hebrews. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, a clear statement of what faith is by definition in the Bible. Now, if we go back to 38 of chapter 10, now just shall live by faith. We're going to show you what faith is. We're going to tell you. We're going to give you illustrations. Then what we're going to follow in these illustrations are men and women that are found in the Old Testament. Some of them before Abraham. But they would be widely known among Jewish people who've gone to synagogue, who's gone to temple. So these would not be names of foreigners. They'll be well known. And it'll give you more understanding of more of the people of the Bible. There's a lot of times you, you learn more, like Stephen, when he gives the history of Israel. Well, there are some things we learned that we didn't read in Exodus, that we didn't read in in the, uh, the, the writings of the Old Testament. So, things hoped for. Oh, I want it to happen. The evidence of things not seen. Well, as far as the church age, as far as what we've been talking about, 10 chapters, the Lord Jesus Christ coming. You haven't seen it, but it's coming. For by it, faith, the elders obtained a good report. Elders. The elders of Israel, they were known that, have a good report of their faith. The church elders of 64 AD had a good report of faith. Faith is what we need to be saved. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. God said, let there be. God said, let there be. God said, let there be. John 1.1 1, 1 says that word is Jesus Christ. So again, speaking about faith, we ran all the way back to Genesis 1.1 1, 1, the book of Moses. Genesis 1.3. Genesis 1, wherever it says, God, let, and God said, let there be. So we're going back to Genesis. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel, Genesis chapter 4, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, Genesis chapter 4. Okay, so we run faith, we run creation, we run Abel and Cain. Why would we start off with these two people? Well, what's it say? Sacrifice. That's the foundation of man serving God in the Bible. Abel brought blood. Cain brought the fruit stand. And God had more approval, more acceptance of Abel's offering than Cain's offering. Well, what's been the whole life of the, of the Jews from Exodus 20? Sacrificing. Abraham built an offer, a sacrifice animal. Isaac built an altar. Jacob built an altar. 
So by faith, offer, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. This would be worship. We're going to run W. Worship. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. How was he righteous? By Jesus Christ? No, by bringing blood. Without blood, there is no remissions of sins. God testifying of his gifts. That was a gift. And by it, the gift, he being dead, yet speaketh. God told Abel, I mean, God told Cain, your brother's blood speaketh to me. So, what was the faith here? The sacrifice being approved. Wasn't really sure. To that moment when God sent the fire down, push. Abel knew. Accepted. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Now, death was in verse 4. Death is verse 5. And was not found. Rapture. Because God had translated him, for before his translation, he had a testimony that he pleased God. So Enoch had a walk with God. And what was Enoch's faith? His translation. I wonder if God told him one day like he told the church. You're going up. The book of Revelation tells those Jews that in the midst of the tribulation, there will be a rapture. Rapture is nothing new. We just, you know, it, you can't find the word R-A-P-T-U-R-E, but we can find it in the Bible. It's there. We just give it a, a one word title. So to the Jews, rapture would be nothing new. So when the church disappears, that sounds familiar. After Abel offered one sacrifice of blood, now somebody's gone. Ah. But, there's a little side note. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So no atheist can come to God. Anybody involved with evolution can't come to God because they don't believe in God. Evolution, atheism does not please God. And if you show the tiniest bit of a mustard seed of faith to God, and I don't understand, but there has to be a, a supreme being. God will reward that rather than you look it up and say, kaboom, here we are. Or you look at a puddle and, oh, okay, th th those mosquitoes, they become us. Or I just don't believe in God. When a man shows a little faith in God, God is instructed to that man to show him more faith. Then show him more faith. And that moment when faith stops is when he stops believing in God. God is righteous. See, what about the heathen that never knew? Maybe some of them heathen never wanted to know. Or did know, and we've already saw, they rejected, and they get the wrath of God. So, speaking of Hebrews, you would think all Hebrews would believe in God. That's a myth. Go back and look in the Old Testament. There are plenty of Hebrews, especially in Israel, Northern tribe that did not believe in God. They believed in the golden calf. They believed in Baal. They believed in Ashtoreth. They believed in anything but God. Just because you're a Hebrew does not mean you are fully approved of God. An individual. If you don't believe in God, you're a Hebrew. You're children of, the, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't believe in God, you're not getting saved. So don't come to God and say, oh, here's my ID and my DNA. I'm of Abraham. Did you believe in me? No. Go to hell. Because here comes Gentiles. Do you believe that Jesus Christ, my son, died on the cross and was buried and rose again the third day from the virgin birth of, of Mary? 
Yeah, Lord, I believe that. I believe Jesus can save my soul from, from hell. That's faith. You're in. I'm of no nothing of Abraham. So faith is very much important. So when you deal with somebody who does not believe in God, try to get they do they really not believe in God? If they really do not believe in God, you can't go no further. You gotta stop. Sorry, you gotta stop. That goes for your family, that goes for your friends, your co-workers, or anybody you meet on the street. You must have faith in God to be saved. By faith, Noah. You think all the you think the Jews know who Noah was? They found people in Japan, China, all over the world, the Native Americans, the people down in South America, they have a story of a man that got in a ship or boat or something with his family, with two of every kind of animal. That story is worldwide, but in the American churches today. Isn't that funny? The world believe it, but the churches don't. All right, so Noah, the Jews would know Noah. Being warned of God of things not seen yet. Look at verse 1. Moved with fear. Fear of what? God. Preparing an ark to the saving of his house. Now this one would be work. By the which he, con he condemned the world. We read later that he preached while he built that ark. And became heir of righteousness by his faith. So what is the result of the faith here? Judgment and salvation. Noah, yes sir. I'm going to judge the world. I'm going to drown out the world. You build an ark, such, 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 such. He never seen rain. The, the Bible says there was never any rain. Until that day when, when the Lord opened up the heavens. Noah never seen any rain. He believed God. It was going to rain. It was going to rain hard. It was going to flood. He built that. He built that ark, the judgment, and he believed God would save him and his family. That's faith. Enoch believed that God would take him one day out of it. Abel believed that that sacrifice he gave would get him to God. Faith. You see how we're all showing the Jews what we need by faith. Abraham. When he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out not knowing where he went. Now this would be a wait. You're not going to get it today. You're not going to get it tomorrow. And the result of this faith is the salvation that the Jews seek, the land promise. Abraham, it's amazing look north east south and west yeah i will give you this land that's the same thing god told moses before he died look around the bible says moses saw the promised land but he did not go in so don't say god gave him the spirit and put him in that promised land because he couldn't because god said you can't go in so later on when he shows up with elijah and jesus the eyesight that god can give you you imagine he saw all the land now, we're getting closer to the Jews because here is the Jews, quote, unquote, heaven. That land. They want the Romans out of it. They want the, the, the Philistines out of it. They want the UAR out of it. They want Ishmael out of it. It's going to happen. After seven years of tribulation and when they finally receive Jesus Christ as their Messiah and King on David's throne, you'll get that land. That has not happened yet. David's the only king that had the full reign of that land and Solomon. No other king has. And they're giving it up today with walls because they want peace with the, with the, uh, A, the, A, uh, the, the Arabians and Jordan. By faith he sojourned in a land of promise. He lived there. As in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, no Ishmael, and heirs with him of the same promise. Isaac and Jacob got that same promise of faith, the land promise. But they don't get that land that Joshua brings them in. Problem with, with Abraham and Isaac. Every time they had a problem, they kept running down to Egypt, and God did not want them to do that. So God said, fine, I'll send you down to Egypt. 
I'll give you hard bondage so you will not want to come back. But that didn't do it well either. For he looked for a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Well, that's interesting. We learned that Abraham was looking for a city that was built. I don't remember reading that in, in Genesis. What is this city? I'm going to tell you exactly what I know. I don't know. I'm not going to assume it's New Jerusalem. I ain't not going to assume it's anything. But there's one thing that God did tell the, the Jews in the wilderness, in the travel to the book of Moses. There will be one city that where my, I'll put my name. There will be one place where I'll put my name. There will be one tribe where I'll put my name. But Jerusalem is so messed up today. So I don't know. I don't know what you can say about this. But look what we read in Hebrews. To the Jews. Abraham looked for a city built by God. As a Christian. I'm looking for a city built by God. New Jerusalem. Jesus said a mansion. What's this city? I have no idea. All right, through faith, also Sarah. You think the Jews knew Sarah? She's the mother of them all. Herself received strength to conceive seed. All right, her W would be the womb. It was dead. Paul tells us that womb was dead. You know, after a certain time of life for a woman, she will be unable, completely able not to bear a child no more. The uterus and all that becomes dead. And was delivered of a child when she was past age. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now, somebody will come up to you and say, judge not, least you be judged. Did you just read what Sarah did to God? She judged God. <laughs> what was her judgment upon God? You're faithful, God. Of all the things about you, God... You're faithful. So there are good judgments. I judge God the day I got saved. How did I judge God? You can save my soul and nothing else can. How's that? You did that too when you got saved. You judged God to be true and right by the testimony of Jesus Christ. And then you believed on him. Just like Sarah did. Now what was her faith? Now, this is kind of hard because pregnancy you can feel, but you really can't see. There was no doctors, remember, back then. There was no ultrasound. Rebecca had a problem in her belly. She went to God, the gynecologist, and said, God, what's going on in here? Did I have too much pizza the night before? He said, you got two children in that womb, and they're fighting. Oh, really? So what would be the faith of Sarah through her nine months. I am so old. Is this child going to be delivered? <laughs> Even though I find God faithful. And right. I'm just too old. Am I going to be able to push this child? And that it would be a boy? Am I going to have enough strength to give birth? She's never done it before. That's her faith. And when, now let me tell you something too. Let me show you something. When Abel offered his blood and the fire came down, he was approved, right? Was there any more faith of Abel about his sacrifice? No. It, there it is. It's been shown. It's approved. Enoch, when he's walking along one day, boom, he's with God. Would he have faith anymore in that translation or the rapture? No, he's with God. Noah, when he steps out of that ark on that new earth, I mean new earth, it's been dried up, and people are, are all gone, they've been judged. Would he have faith in rain and judgment anymore? No, because there he is. He's stepping on a fresh earth. Abraham. Well, we're, kind of, we're still in Abraham's faith. He still has not gotten that land. Sarah. What's the Bible say? As a pangs, a woman could give birth, but after she gave birth to her first 
born child. She's relieved. She's excited. What do you think? She now has the baby. It's in her bosom. Would she have to need faith anymore to deliver that child? No. My faith. I believe Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. He's coming for me. I believe if I die, I'll be absent from the body, present with the Lord. If I were to be raptured, we will meet the Lord in the air. The day I see Jesus Christ, I will not need faith in Jesus Christ no more because there he is. So when we get to the eternity, I can teach this with the church age and for the Jew. Faith will be gone. Prophecy will be gone in the eternity. And what is the faith we're showing the Jews? We've been doing 11 chapters now. That prophet Moses will come if you end up in the time of Jacob's trouble. Hold out. Hold out to the end. God's coming. But we've seen little things in, in Hebrews like, man, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now, will you? Because <laughs> he's coming. The writers of the New Testament believe Jesus was coming their time. Now, because Jesus didn't come, that didn't mean he's not coming. We've got the same faith. So, therefore, 12, sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky and the multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore, innumerable. That's the Jewish people by Isaac. You can't count them. There are so many Jews from Isaac. These all died. There's died again. But Enoch. In faith. Now let's go back to verse chapter 10, verse 39. But we are not of them who drew back into perdition, but them that believe to the saving of the soul. These Jews in the tribulation period, if they're going to die by losing their head, by whatever means, drought. Uh, an antichrist natural cause whatever they're going to do if they're going to die and be right with God even though be beheaded they must die in faith I don't know about Demas but looks like he lost his faith but that's a whole different dispensation of church from the, from the Jews in tribulation not having received the promises. Well, how's that sound? You died in faith, but you didn't receive it yet. But having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Christians don't even profess that today. But Abraham did. For they that say such things, declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. If Abraham really thought about where he came from, he may have gone back. And we just read, again, a 1039. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition. The writer's warning, don't go back. Keep going like Abraham. Be like Abraham. But now they desire a better country. And this is not America, United States. How do you know that? That is a heavenly America is not heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. All I can think is that Jerusalem. In the millennium. Where Jesus will sit as king. I assume that's the city. 
Now, we're mistakenly, when the, the pilgrims came and they came to be the Congregationalists, they called their settlement in Massachusetts the, the City of Light, that new city that Abraham saw, that the, that the new Jews of the world, you know, the, the Gentiles. And this is the same city that the Roman Catholic searches out and fights all the worlds and all the battles so they can get their one heavenly holy city, Rome. They are stealing from the Hebrews, from the Jews. And God is not well pleased with them. Those people will say that God is all finished with the Jews. Now, let me read. Hebrews, right? Hebrews. But now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Does that sound like God's given those Hebrews up? But before war, Armstrongism, Roman Catholicism, Congregationalists, they will steal from the promise of the Jews. By faith, Abraham again. We're talking a lot about Abraham. Well, him and Moses were D of the D of the DDs. De definite article. When he was tried, Genesis 22. James 1, 12 and 13, offered up Isaac. Now, don't you think the Jews would know that one? And he that received the promises of, <coughs> excuse me, offered up his only begotten son. Now, do you see where the writer's going with this one? This would be awakening. I mean, awakening, not awakening. Awakening. Just watch. Of whom it is said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That son, Isaac, Abraham, that is going to be the race of people from your loins, Isaac and Sarah. So, what I want you to do, Abraham, I want you to take him to this particular mountain. I want you to kill him. Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and grabbed two of his servants, took his son Isaac. They went to the mountain, put the wood on Isaac's back, and took the knife in the fire. Well, you know, Abraham told no, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. According that God, now this is the faith of Abraham. According that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. What is the, the, the faith of Abraham here in Genesis 22? The resurrection. Go back from, from Genesis 22 to Genesis 1. When did you ever read of a resurrection? This is the faith of Abraham. This is where we're going now. And this is where we're looking at Jesus Christ, the only begotten son. God, this is the only promised son, Isaac. Yep. You want me to go kill him? Yep. Okay? God, I'll take him to that mountain. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'll kill that boy. And I'm going to sit right here in this rock and I'm going to wait for you to rise him from the dead. You have to, God. If I kill that boy, you have to raise him up. I'm going to sit here and wait because you said that's the boy that's going to be the seed of my people. Now, how's that for faith? Abraham would have sat there we know by Genesis 22 that God had no intention of, of, of Abraham going forth and killing his son. But did Abraham know that? We read in Genesis 22, Abraham grabbed that knife and had that angel sneezed or anything, Isaac would have been dead. And the faith of Abraham was, you're going to raise that boy. Now, that's not a picture of Jesus Christ. And then Abraham, and then Isaac says, Father, where's the lamb? God shall provide himself a lamb. You run those two stories back and forth, and there's Jesus Christ. As John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God. Wonderful message. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. That would be will. I mean, excuse me. That would be wealth. Man, it said one part, and Isaac, he, he, uh, 100%. He, he sold and got 100%.
by faith, Jacob. You wouldn't think Jacob had any faith. That boy in his life. That guy was a troublemaker. He was a swindler. When he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, Manasseh of Ephraim, and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. That's a will. He's dying. And he incorporated Manasseh and Ephraim into the 12 tribes of Israel, which we'll learn later on. Levi will not become a tribe. Remember? Well, who do we've been talking about for nine chapters? Levi. So you see, the book of Hebrews is bringing the history of the Hebrews unto Jesus Christ. The writer of Hebrews, he knows that Old Testament. And he knows how to bring it to the Jews. I don't even know that much. I think if God would have brought me a Jew, I'd probably fail. I know one thing. If I were to deal with a Jew, I would be praying and praying and praying. Because I would not want to do wrong. By faith, Joseph, when he died, look at die, 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 die. You see that? Even in East, I mean, uh, uh, Enoch, that he may not see death. Death became a word in faith by faith Joseph when he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones that's a want I want you to take my bones out of this place don't you leave my bones in this place like Enoch's body was not left in this place if you don't see the revelation in the in the, in the great Hebrew history and how it lays out in the future and prophecy. Ooh, wait. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. This would be a welfare. And this is not a government welfare because the government said kill those babies. But it's funny because the welfare, is, later on you learn that his mother got paid by the government to take care of her own boy. Got to raise him up in the Jewish way. Hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child, and they had not, and they were not afraid of the king's command. Not afraid of the king. We didn't read that in Exodus. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, look at Moses. He gets mentioned a lot. Abraham gets mentioned a lot. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now this is willing. He was willing not to go to be an Egyptian. He wanted to be a child of God. His mother raised him properly. Even though his circumstances. Listen, this guy grew up in the ghetto of black people. And he came to the realm of one day, I want to be Jewish. How do you like that? Choose, now, what, now verse 25 is interesting. Choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The Bible says sin has pleasures. But it also says it has consequences. Evil follows sin. And Moses said, you know what? I can lap in this luxury of being Pharaoh and all this gold and silver and they can make me a god and make me a pyramid and everything and bow down and all the things and he said you know what i'm going to suffer those people my people where do you think christians stand with that one today uh churches with ample theaters decked out stages skits rock and roll rap music their own personal kind of Bible that goes with their sin. Not like they want the pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Christ? What did Moses know about Christ? That's Jesus. Written about Moses. 
Didn't he tell the people of Israel there will be a prophet like it unto me? You better listen to him. Moses knew a lot more about Jesus Christ than the people did. not By faith, he, Moses, withstood Egypt, and fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, as seeing him who is invisible. This is a withdrawal. He left Egypt. He got out as a murderer. All have sin comes short of the glory of God. Some people, some people, and, and, and people say, well, you know, if you're involved in that sin, you can never be used again. You can't be this anymore. Moses killed a man and ran and did not ever face the law of Egypt about it. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Least he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. This would be a wonder. And what's a wonder here? That, that, that God and the death angel would go through Egypt and they would look at the doorposts. I see blood. Okay. Not this house. This house. Come on. Let me go in that house. No. I see blood. Can't do it. I'm getting tired, God. Why'd you call me out here? This house. I don't see no blood. Go ahead and kill the first one. Okay. I'll be right back. Next house. No blood. Go in. Next up, oh, I see blood. He can't go in. Uh, that was a wonder. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. The sea became dry land, which the Egyptians essayed to do were drowned. This is a walk. Sometimes I wonder if some ran. But, you know. By faith, they, the Israelites, they had some faith in Moses who led them. By faith, the walls of Jericho, and I already said the other day, there is no wilderness. Forty years between 29 and 30, there was no faith. It's missing. So, if you did not have the book of Moses, you, hey, oh, oh, look at that. They went from the Red Sea and ended up in Jericho. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. This would be the wall. Now, can you imagine? All right, Josh, a report for duty. What are we going to do about this command, sir? All right, we're going to march around the city, we're going to blow trumpets, and we're not going to say a word. Okay. Day two. Uh, when are we going to get a sword? When are we going to put? No, no, don't say nothing. And on the seventh day, we're going to march around seven more times, six more times, and then we're going to show. Cuckoo. -coo. No, that's not how they said. Is that what God told you, Joshua? Yes, that's what God told me. Let's shut up for seven days. Let's go around six more times on the seventh day. Show! And the walls came down. And those spies went in there and looked at that wall and said, the only wall that's left, and if you look at pictures of it today, the only wall that's left is where that where that woman that protected us. Right out. Not only the faith of the walls coming down, but the faith of those spies to say, we're gonna we gotta save Rahab somehow. How's that for faith? By faith, the harlot Rahab. Oh, there she is. By faith, the harlot Ray, the harlot Rahab, perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. The entire city did not believe in God. They were they were perished. Rahab the harlot had faith, and she became a winner. A silk, red silk thread. You know what the America would do in the church? They would sell red silk thread, put it on your doors, put it in your car. Why are we doing it? I don't know. We we'll just make money off it. Prize ribbons. Prize ribbons. Yeah. Rahab, a whore, a whore, had enough faith that she and her family survived. Doesn't that sound like Noah? 
They stayed in their house. Doesn't that sound like the night of the Passover? They stayed in their house with the blood. You stay in the Lord with your faith and you'll come out. For the whole city destroyed, you'll come out fine. Put your faith, what, you know, what we're writing in Hebrews is, put your faith in God and ten chapters we've been talking about Jehovah Jesus Christ. Put your faith in there. Don't give up. And what shall I say, and what shall I more say? It's like he wants to keep going. For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. These are Old Testament spelling of Greek. That's the only way I'm going to say it, Greek. Gideon and of Barak and of Samson. People who Jewish people would know. Now Samson, that's a, do you see his name in the book of Hebrews 11, the faith chapter? He committed suicide. And many religions, including the Jewish religion, would say if you committed suicide, you had your own special place in hell. Kind of funny, a man that committed suicide, who had a wicked life of sex, and there he is in the great faith chapter. Guess who you're going to see in heaven one day? You're going to read Samson. You're going to see Samson. You read about his sins? Isn't it great how God will forgive your sins when you have faith? And Jesse, that's the man that said, Lord, the first thing that comes out of my house, I'm going to worship you by giving it to you by a burnt offering. Hi, Dad. Oh. And he did. If that was me and my daughter, would be like, God, where can I find a loophole? And there was a, uh, not time for that, but there was a loophole. There was a loophole, but you know what? He served God. And David also. And Samuel. And of the prophets. I think the, I think the writer of Hebrew, he wanted to go on and on and on, but. Who through faith. Now watch this. Subdued kingdoms, battles, wars. Wrought righteousness. That's what Jesus Christ did. Obtained promises. Standing on the promises, God's my Savior. If I ain't got no faith, I ain't going to get it. Stop the mouth of lions. Who, who do you think that one is? Daniel. With the Holy Spirit. Quench the violence of fire. Now, as we go into some people are going to say, this is Isaiah. This is Jeremiah and something. I don't know if there's proof. Quench the violence of fire. That could be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Escape the edge of the sword. We'll go back and read the Old Testament. Out of weakness were made strong. Wax violent in fight. We just read about a guy who fought over beans. Lentils. Turn to fight the armies of the aliens. Now that's not UFOs. That's people odd and strangers to Israel. Women received their dead... Raised to life again. That's in the Old Testament. These are stories the Hebrews would know and cherish. Not accepting deliverance. If you refrain from, from your belief in God will keep you alive. This is something that's happened in the church age. That they might obtain a better resurrection. Ooh. So they're waiting for the resurrection. And what happened when Christ died and gave up the ghost? Boom! Guess who came up? The Old Testament saints. Glory to God in the highest. Their faith was secured when Jesus died and was buried and arose again the third day. It says they walked, I would think, the whole 40 days. I think it was the 40 days that Jesus was seen after his resurrection. Yeah, you get to see him walking around Jerusalem. Kind of weird because the unbelievers never, I don't think the unbelievers ever saw that. But he just see him wearing, hello, my name is King David. <laughs> he just say David, just say, you should have seen what was over here when I was growing up. You should have seen over here when I was the king. This wasn't here. And you see Solomon showing up. That don't look like mine. <laughs> he just, I mean, I'm comical. I mean, you think they just sat on the park bench while they were visiting? I don't think so. I think they testified to things of God, but I don't know. I'd like to throw 
a little wisdom into, into what I think. All right. Get back. And others had trial of crude mockings and scorns. That could be Christians, but it, they did. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Jeremiah. Ezekiel was trapped in his own house, unable to speak. Could also be the, the apostles. They were stoned. They were sawed asunder. Let's see, a note here. The Apocrypha says this was Isaiah. Were tempted. Were slain with the sword. And wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy. We can all, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus. You know the suffering you put down for Christ and the word and the gospel. The world is not worthy of you. It is the love of God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes him should not perish by heaven. It's only the love of God that God sends them, sends you to them. If God really wanted to, if he did not love the world, we wouldn't be saved in the first place, okay? But if we could get saved, out of the, God would just take us home and say, to hell with the world. And because you are a faithful servant of God, Old Testament or New Testament, that world is not worthy of you. And that world will go to hell. They will be absent from your presence for eternity. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. That's not like a good living. Modern Christians don't want this life. But notice where this shows up. Christians want faith, but they don't want the suffering. That this great faith chapter, Hebrews 11, closes with suffering. And the modern church does not want that. Going back to the Hebrews again. Suffering will be the realm of Jacob's trouble. You've got Satan himself chasing the Jews. You're not going to live in a penthouse. You're not going to live in an apartment building. Because you won't receive that mark. And you're not going to have high class clothing and all that. Because you won't take that mark. You may have to have some Gentiles take care of you. And these all having obtained a good report through faith. How's your report going to be when you stand in the judgment seat of Christ, Christian? Receive not the promise. They didn't get the land. But it's coming. That faith for the land for the Jews is still yet coming. God has provided some better thing for us. Who's the us? Run back to Hebrews. So, God promised Abraham a land. He promised Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. And man, out of that son is going to be all kinds of children. If I'm going to give you something better than that, Abraham, you're going to have a piece of land. Boy, it's going to be glorious, wonderful, and, and peace, and merciful, and, and blessing, without sin, no curses and all that. And your children will all be right. I will put in their heart my law. I will remember their sin no more. Imagine Abraham sitting with those descendants. What I believe is the new earth. That they without. They without us should not be made perfect. Those who are not with us. They won't be perfect. So implying again. Those that have faith in God. And do the will of God. Old Testament and Hebrews in the future you will be perfect you will have the laws not on a stone that you can worship but it's going to be in your heart in your mind and you will be without sin you will be without iniquity i'll give you an uncursed earth now how's that 
And forget about the tabernacle. Forget about the temple. You want to come to me, Jehovah? Come through one of my gates. Just come through the gate that has your tribe's name. Through one of the tribes of the Lamb. Peter, James, John, Andrew, and all that. And join all those people that have believed on my son. Come forth with it. Hey, you heard there were cherubim in that mercy plate? In the, in the, in the, uh, the Holy of Holies? Well, in the eternity, you can come and see those cherubim minus one. You heard about the stories of the of the angels coming to Abraham, the angels coming to Lot, the angels coming to Jacob. You heard about those stories, right? Well, in the eternity, you can come to New Jerusalem where all the angels are. How's that for a Jew living the Old Testament in perfection? Everything their fathers had, they'll get even better perfected. How's that for a promise for the Jew? It's a wonderful thing.